But let's make this clementine scrubby pot scrubber to scrub your pots with and to clean with. It's four inches wide by three inches high. It's great for scrubbing. You'll need an H crochet hook. I use a Susan Bates 5.0. I love Red Heart Scrubby Sparkle Yarn. You'll need two colors, one in avocado and the other one in orange. It's a four weight. I'm sorry I don't have a wrapper for the orange. This part may be just a little bit blurry, but it does get better, I promise. So chain three and join in the ring, but you start with a slip knot. I have a tutorial on my website, on my YouTube channel, how to chain three and join in a ring. So let's get started. Chain three. I don't recommend the magic circle. I feel like it will open up when using it on this type of product since you'll be uh, scrubbing with this product. All right, we're joining in the ring. I also have a little bit of poison ivy, so I apologize if you see some weird spots on my hand. There we go. Digging right in there. Wrap that yarn tail around. Now, slip stitch. Now chain one and execute seven single crochets in the ring. Now, if it gets a little bit tight, just shove those stitches so you can get the rest, shove them over so you can get the rest of the stitches in there. All right. Here's the last stitch. This is the seventh single crochet. Now we need to join in the top of that single crochet. Bypass the chain one, but we're going to drop the green and pull up the orange. And it's easy. Just as you're slip stitching, insert your hook into that stitch to start that slip stitch and pull up the orange and there we have the color transition now it's chain one and two single crochets in the joining stitch and in each stitch around now it is easy to miss that joining stitch you saw me open that up so that I could make sure that I didn't miss that joining stitch this seems a little bit tight but it does get easier as you go on and two single crochets in the next stitch and on each stitch around. Let me speed up the camera. Okay, we will have 14 stitches. I'm finishing that last single crochet and I'm joining to the top of that first single crochet. There it is. Had to dig a little. There we go. Slip stitch. Now let's take a minute and clip off that yarn tail, but keep the working yarn in the back. So the next round is chain one, single crochet in the first stitch, and two single crochets in the next stitch. So that's an increase. And the pattern continues with one single crochet in the next stitch and two single crochets. There's our one single crochet and two single crochets in the next stitch. We will do that all the way around. Let me speed up the camera so that you're not waiting forever. And so we are at the end of the round. We have executed one single crochet and then two single crochets in each stitch. All right, now let's join to the top of that first single crochet that was made with a slip stitch, chain one, and the pattern will be single crochet in the joining stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, and two single crochets in the next stitch. And that will be the pattern. 
a single crochet, a single crochet, and two single crochets. A single crochet, a single crochet, and two single crochets. And we will do that all the way around. Let me speed the camera up. And we are at the end of the round. And this is the single crochet that we will slip stitch into. The yarn is a little bit fuzzy, so it's a good idea to put a marker in the very first stitch that was made so that you don't have to hunt for it. But this is the first stitch that was made. Join with a slip stitch. And before we move on, let's elongate our loop so that it's easier, easy to find. Turn it over and work in or trim off that yarn tail, but I'm going to work that in. It, there was not a knot, so I'm going to work that across a few times, taking a back stitch, clipping it off. That's one less yarn tail I need to work with or worry about. Now, we still have that green working tail hanging down from the middle. So now chain one, the pattern will be chain one, single crochet in the joining stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, and then the increase, two single crochets. So it's three, a single crochet, so it's three single single crochets. So it's single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, then two single crochets. All right, that's how that works. Let me point out the pattern again single crochet single crochet single crochet and two single crochets right there all right single 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 and two and we'll complete that all the way around and I'll meet you at the end of where the join is and here we are at the end let's join with a slip stitch to the top of that single crochet the very first single crochet that was made there we go slip stitch now after we get that join made nice looking little clementine it's a good start so then it's chain one and single crochet in each stitch around no more increases and we will do that for four rows and here we are at the end of the four rows of no increases. You can see that the clementine is starting to cup in. I'm going to join and now after the join we will start the decrease process and that is chain one, single crochet in the joining stitch, the next stitch, and the next stitch, then a decrease. And a decrease is insert hook, pull up a loop, go to the next stitch, insert hook pull up a loop you have three on the hook and then all three together and you've decreased by one stitch so single crochet single crochet single crochet three times and then a decrease so single crochet in the next three stitches and then a decrease decrease there we go let's do that all the way around and i'll meet you at the end of the round meeting you at the join and remember always chain one and this round is single crochet in the first two stitches so single crochet in the join single crochet in the next stitch and a decrease that's there we go that's a decrease so single crochet single crochet and a decrease single crochet single crochet and a decrease and we'll do that all the way around and I'll meet and here we are at the end let's join with that slip stitch chain one then it is one single crochet then the decrease now you will start noticing that you will start the decrease in the stitch before the decrease you'll get used to this all right single crochet and a decrease single crochet and a decrease all the way around and I'll meet you at the end of the round now we're ready to join join with that slip stitch to the very first single crochet that was made now chain one and there are no 
single simple single crochet so it is decrease all the way around you immediately start decreasing this is closing up our little clementine there's our decrease continue that all the way around let's get the camera moving we might need to get that green yarn out of the way just a little bit it's starting to get in our way now that the clementine is closing down but that's not really a problem because we're going to pull that up in just a moment all right so we have the clementine just about finished we need to join with a slip stitch to that first decrease There we go. Now, put the yarn, orange yarn, over to the side. We still have the green. The hole is very small, so slip stitch ac directly across from where the join was and pull up the green. Now, we're going to make the hanging loop. But first, I want to close that hole up a little bit more and make another slip stitch just to close that up a little more. All right, now we're going to chain 16. And after we're finished with that, those 16 chains, we will slip stitch right beside the last slip stitch or where we joined. Now, if you want a cuter, if you want to loop to look more like a stem you can decrease in them the amount of chains that you make I wanted my stem or my hanging loop to be a genuine hanging loop so it's a little bit longer than what a stem would look like there we go so now we're getting ready to join just join across both sides not just in one side just grab both sides clip off the end finish off and I like to tie the green and the orange together in a square knot. So a square knot is right over left. Well, it's a surgeon's knot. It's kind of a square surgeon's knot. Right over left. Hank it down. Pull it down. There we go. Now it's left over right. This is kind of hard to do it on camera. All right. and two, turn it in there two times and then stitch it and then pull it down tight. And then I use my yarn needle and I weave those ends in. That loop is long enough. Um, you need to shape your clementine just a little bit. It will shape up very nicely for you. If you do a north, south, east, west, pull and smash her down. There we go. Just working those yarn tails in. All right, now. Now it's time to make the leaf. And the leaf is fairly easy. You chain five. And single crochet in the second a chain from the hook. double crochet in the next two chains. That's one double crochet in the next two chains. So a double crochet, one double crochet in each of those two chains. All right, two single crochets in this last chain. Now we need to make a pico, and a pico is chain three and slip stitch back down into that first chain that was made of the chain three. See that first chain? Yep, we're gonna slip stitch right back down in there and just insert your hook, pull up a loop and pull it through. Now we need to put one more single crochet in that same stitch where the two single crochets were. And that pico makes a little point on the leaf. Now we will be single crocheting, no, double crochet, I apologize, a double crochet in the back side 
of those chains. So there's that double crochet, and I'm crocheting over top of that yarn tail. There's the second double crochet, and then a single crochet in that last back loop of the chain. We'll need to close that leaf by slip stitching across into the first single crochet that was made. And there we go. All right, end off and leave a yarn tail for sewing. Trim off the yarn that we crocheted over top of. Now let's decide where we want that leaf. I like it to be right in the center over top of where the chain loop is. Just kind of hold it there. You can pin that in place if you feel more comfortable with that. Thread that onto your favorite yarn needle. I like to use a metal needle. I feel like I can get the yarn woven into stitches easier that way. All right, so let's get started from front to back, and then back to front, catching the stitches in the area that you want the leaf to lay, like right down in there. I want that leaf to be positioned in that manner, so I'm going to go right down in there, but I'm trying to get the needle to come out in the area that I've been going in, and I just continue going back and forth, just making sure everything is tightened, and then really work my yarn tail around the stem so that it's tight, and then work it down into the clementine and clip it off. You can't see my scissors, I'm sorry. There we go. All right, so we're finished. We have a cute little clementine. Now your clementine, if you follow the pattern, will not be as poofy. I inadvertently added one extra single crochet. I had eight single crochets, but you follow the pattern, don't do as I do, and your clementine won't come out as bumpy. It will come out cute like this. And there is a clementine with a shorter stem. You might like that one. All right, there's the two good ones. Oh, and by the way, I have orange dishcloths that would match. These would make such a nice gift. The orange dishcloth will be live on my website or you can purchase the ad-free clementine and orange bundle on Etsy and Ravelry. Oh, I also have lemon scrubbies. I hope you enjoyed this clementine scrubby tutorial. It was good to have you on my side of the mountain. I hope you'll come again soon. Bye.